So Diary of a Teenage Girl was unique in that we also were on a very limited budget. It was very small, but we wanted a very cinematic look for it. And one of my sort of go-to, uh, I don't know, tricks <laughs> to make something look like it's a little more expensive is to shoot with anamorphic lenses, even if it's a movie where you don't have a lot of money. Now they're expensive and they're hard to afford, but I think it's worth actually spending the money for those lenses just to give you that look. So we, um, we leaned in, we were able to get these lenses for the movie, and it really sort of allowed us to bring forth this, not only uh, scope of the film, but this sort of vintage tone that we wanted to give the movie. It takes place in 1976, I think and we wanted it to just feel like it was of that era. But the best discovery of that movie was um, when I was prepping some lenses at Panavision, um, the lens tech brought out like a tray of like, here's weird lenses off the shelf, like dusting them off so that we could take, take a look at them. And there was this one lens that was a, uh, it's a macro lens, which allows you to focus very close. And, and um, the, anamorphic lenses are fantastic, but a lot of them don't allow you to focus very close. You have to be far away um, from, from what you're focusing on. And this lens was sort of a wide-ish lens. It's a 55. It allows close focus up to like, I don't know, like nine inches or something like that, which was just a, a just a much different look in terms of like a close-up. So I put it on, and testing, I got very close to a face, and you just had this sense of like roundness. There was like a depth that you got to it with anamorphic that you're just not usually able to get. And I showed this lens to the director, and that just became the look for the whole movie. I mean, we shot 90% of the film on the on this one lens for the whole thing just um, because we sort of felt, you could feel it with the lens. It's like, that's the other thing too, like I, I'm not the most technical DP in the world. It's really like, this feels right, let's go with that. That look really carried on into Can You Ever Forgive Me, which was the next film that I did with, uh, with Mari Heller. And we had planned on just sort of doing the same thing. Um, not the same look, you know, not like, Diary, a diary was very handheld, Can You Ever Forgive Me was very, um, composed and registered and kind of classic feeling. You know, we almost wanted like an older sort of like, yeah, you know, like almost Woody Allen tone to the, to the way that the sort of camera would be just planted. So we were gonna shoot anamorphic and we had a whole package lined up. And then while I was there prepping the camera, they were testing out this new um, Panavision camera called the DXL, which is this large format sensor camera, which I had a little bit of experience with. I tested it months before, but didn't think it was right for this movie. But we, they were there with it and they had some older lenses for the camera um, and I threw them on and did a little test and kind of went, oh man, this actually feels like it might be better for this movie, even though it was going against what we'd already said we wanted to do. So I showed the director and um, we loved it and then we had to, and we decided that's what we wanted to do. But the lenses we wanted to use now, the, one, the lenses that they showed us were not available. So we had to like figure out a new way to sort of achieve that same look. And I was able to get um, Panavision to design a whole new set of lenses based off of their brand new Primos to sort of, I guess, focus less. <laughs> they were too sharp. And I just wanted them, I wanted to dial them back so that they, um, you know, just had a little more of a, uh, like, a like a smooth, almost like, they almost had like a creamy feel to it with the look that we got. and. You know, I just wanted to really knock the film back so that it had this very specific texture to it. You know, it's it's easy with these digital cameras to get a really sharp, really clean, really like perfect image, and that's something that I'm always, unless it calls for the, calls for that for the story, I'm always striving for the opposite of that. And um, you know, I stressed the camera so that it was shooting at, at a really high ISO, which means that you know I could shoot with low light, but it also added a lot of noise to the camera, which you know Panavision wasn't pumped about because we were the first film using their camera, but like I just liked the way it looked better, so we did that. Um, I even added a fake grain onto it in post on top of that. So it's like there's a, there's a couple levels that I'll do to these things to sort of add an analog quality into these cameras. But, uh, but I think because of that, it really helped even just how we shot on set. You know, I think that even something that I, that I know that Melissa McCarthy responded to was the fact that we were able to have sort of a small footprint on set. You know, I, I wasn't... Um, if we were in a set like a like an apartment, you know, I could just have a couple of lamps on and maybe one little thing hiding off in the corner, and that was all that we were doing to light the whole scene. And it was sort of just allowing the scene to just take place in a room, you know, just to have a, a performance um, that's not sort of blocked by a bunch of technical gadgetry. The large format lenses give you a little bit more of a perspective, kind of like the human eye. You know, um, and so if you have a wider lens and you go closer to someone's face, which is something that we like to do from diary, uh, 
if you do that, it doesn't distort as much. It's almost like it feels like your eye is just close to someone's, someone's face. And that's the reason why we liked it so much for Can You Ever Forgive Me is that it felt like you were a little more of a fly on the wall viewer um, in this way where you could really get into the personal space of these actors in a way that felt just really organic um, and just close. Again, just like leaning into that intimacy that we really wanted the movie to be. And I feel like not only the camera size and format, but the lenses specifically really sort of drove that look almost, uh, almost completely.